Hi guys, today's episode going to be experimenting with a few bits and going to be trying to make a kind of monolith. So just tracing the shape of an LED tea light and this is going to sit inside the monolith and hopefully it will be able to shine light through the cracks in the outer rock. So then with that shape traced on, we're just going to use a knife and bevel the edge of the foam core. Ideally, you just want this to be enough so that the ridge on the kind of top layer doesn't stick out over the edge when you paint it or flock it later. Then we're going to cut out the shape of the tea light and push it through. And to make sure the tea light can go inside. Then with some more pieces of foam core, we're going to give them a light beveling. And we're just going to use these to add a bit more height to the ground before we add the sculptor mold later. Because the more ground you can do without sculptor mold, the faster it will dry. Then using some hot glue, going to connect them to the foam core base. So the lower portion of the rock, we are going to want to stick to the foam core. So we're going to get some styrofoam and we're going to use the tinfoil ball. And we want to go very heavy with the tinfoil ball, really push the shape into it because we don't want it to be square because there's so much we can mask later with flock and kind of a PVA mix, but the more the kind of base material fits, the better. And you can really kind of push and malform the styrofoam to get some interesting shapes. Then going to take a sculpting tool and going to add some additional cracks into some of the pieces to break them up, just get rid of that rectangular shape. Then with hot glue, we're just going to attach them to the base. It's useful to have the tea light here just so we can see the height and make sure we have room for the tea light. Then going in with the sculpting tool, going to add some more large cracks at the base. I then mixed up some sculptor mold using one-to-one -one plaster and water and mixing that together until it's a nice lumpy consistency. And then I smear this all over the base and in some of the cracks as well, just to fill them in. Ideally, you don't want to go too thick with the sculptor mold. You just want to go thick enough to give it a nice natural appearance. It also starts taking a lot longer to dry as soon as you hit half an inch of thickness. Uh, we're talking several days instead of maybe one or two. Now if you want to, you can wait until this is partially dry and then with a damp finger you can pat it down and get a really nice smooth surface. But I want that kind of rough bumpy texture so I'm going to leave it as is and just pat it around with the side of a sculpting tool. Then a small sprinkle of pebbles and just going to push them in with the side of the sculpting tool. Then with some more styrofoam, going to roll some rock texture onto that. And then we're going to use these as some steps leading up to the monolith. Now, while it's still wet, you do really need to push it in because you need to have a good amount of surface contact with the sculptor mold to actually secure it in place. Then, grabbing some more bits of styrofoam, we're going to roll some more rock texture on them. Uh, we're going to use these almost like puzzle pieces to build a dome over the top of the monolith. This can be a bit tricky because you want to have it looking fairly natural. So there's a lot of dry fitting at this stage and I was just playing around, seeing what worked. And I realised it would probably make more sense if I primed them before I glue them. Because I want them to be cracks in between, but I don't want them to be bright teal blue between. So giving them more coat of black gesso paint, 
And I also took the opportunity to base coat the actual base and the lower half of the monolith as well, just slapping it on everywhere. So with that all dry, I'm going to take some hot glue and start building up the dome. So I kind of winged it here, I just started gluing them where it made sense and where I could get nice connections, where it kind of lent more to that dome semi-sphere shape. And a lot of these gaps between them I seal up later using a mix of flock and PVA. But you can also get rid of a lot of that kind of angularness by using the tin foil ball or just by depressing it with your fingers. So I eventually connected it to the base and then set about fixing the big hole in the back. So with all the styrene pieces in place, I realized there was a pretty big hole in the front and it would be kind of cool to have a glass chunk because that's got the LED right behind it. So I dry fitted a few pieces, found one that fit and pushed it into place. Then grabbing a mixture of coarse and extra fine cork chipping, mix that together with some PVA and some black primer. So I started adding black primer to this kind of basing mix just because it makes it a lot easier when you've got the base coating going on and you don't have the bright kind of yellow beige color showing through. So then with this mixture, just going to smush it into all the cracks and use it to help round out the shape of the monolith. So it's a great material. You can use it for moss, you can use it for mortar, or if you just have crumbling rock, or if you want to have it smoother, just smooth rock. It's really useful. Then being careful not to get any on the glass chunk and using the excess on the base. I then mixed up a new batch using, instead of the fine cork powder, I used some very fine kind of gravel stones and the coarse cork flock. Then mixing that together again with PVA and then some black primer. This is going to be a really great kind of basing material, so we're going to go around and smush it all over the base. And this coarse mix is going to be a great kind of underlayer for one who puts some static grass over the top. Because it's going to look a bit like uh, rocks or dirt. It's just going to be a very kind of useful all-rounder basing paste. Now I probably should have put some more of the small stones on top of the mix here while it was still wet. Just get a bit more variance within the kind of rock textures. Because I think the ones I put down earlier have been fully covered by the paste. So moving on to painting, going to mask off the glass chunk and using a mid-brown we are going to base coat the entire thing. Then mixing up some white and black into a mid-grey, we're going to give the entire thing another coat. And we want to have a little bit of the brown showing through underneath. And we want to give more of a consistent coating where we have the steps and the monolith itself. Then we're going to mix that with some white and some brown to get one of our highlight colours. And we're going to give another coat over the top with that. So it's going to slowly build up layers and layers of colour, going lighter and lighter each time. And ideally, as you go lighter and lighter, you want to put more emphasis on top of the model so you get that fake simulated lighting. Then, with a tiny bit of brown and predominantly white, we're going to give a very light dry brush over the top. And this kind of pale sand colour is going to be our final highlight. And it's really going to help to tie the model together. 
by keeping it all in that same kind of three color palette. So it's the same brown we've used throughout and we've just been altering the kind of shade and tone of it by using white and black. Then using the highlights as well on the base, we can get some really nice color differentiation. Then we're going to put down some PVA and we don't want to completely cover the base with grass, we just want to get a few kind of patches. So grabbing our static grass applicator, we are going to connect the basing clip on the model and we are going to spray static grass all over the rest of it. Then we want to make sure the t alert works and plug it into the base. And make sure we can see the light inside. I turn off my desk lights so we can see it in slightly darker lighting. And we have the light coming through some of the cracks on the back and the sides. So we have a nice kind of magical ebbing monolith. Then of course it wouldn't be complete without a few plant clumps. Then with some PVA and some more clump foliage, we are going to add some moss and kind of undergrowth to the model. This is also a great stage to realize you didn't like one of the clumps and tear it off. Replace with foliage. This is a great step where you can also cover up any areas you missed with the painting or if you chipped any of it, just put some clump foliage over the top. No one will ever know. So by using it slightly finer and putting it in a line, you can get a kind of mossy crag effect. And that also helps to soften the model. But there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll catch you next time.